And on top of that, it's actually different depending on which town you're in. Okay, you're in the same state. It could be five miles apart, and it could be a very different process. And so as we all know, more people will need higher costs. And so let me walk you through one hypothetical city's process. Okay. So let's say you're interested in installing solar. Well, so you go to City Hall and they give you a sheet that says, okay, this is what you have to do. And you start going down this process methodically with the flow chart that you have to go through. And uh, you, you start filling out paperwork and says, okay, if you stand in line, you fill it, you know, you submit paperwork, and then you know you made a mistake, so you have to go back to City Hall. Filling out lots of uh, lots of paperwork. Okay. A lot of people get discouraged. Would you get discouraged if you had to wait nine months to buy a car to get a driver's license? You say, well, it actually takes nine months or, or, or even a year to actually get sold or installed in some places. One of my uh, one of my friends, Tony of Benefici from MIT, put solar on his house in Cambridge. Six months. Six months he doesn't need to register to get uh, to put solar on his house. And so it doesn't have to take this long. And so uh, what happens is, because of the time, it may not actually be the money, but the time, you start losing, you start losing customers, potential customers, because it takes so long. And so, so I find it very exciting that some regions, uh, some states are taking uh, and adopting some ideas, such as you know, trying to get a permit in 10 days. And, and if uh, nobody objects, then it's automatically granted. What's really interesting about this particular city is that they actually have a flow chart. They actually know what process you have to go through. This is actually not true in other regions where people make it up. Okay, so uh, so I'm glad that this city has a has a flow chart, but I'm, I'm disappointed that this, this flow chart could take nine months to go through. And solar permitting is actually different in different regions around the country. So unlike physics, you know, a lot of us are technologists. Unlike physics where we can fundamentally figure out the upper limits on the efficiency of solar cells, it turns out there is no <coughs> such limit to bureaucracy. Okay, there is no such limit to bureaucracy. And so our challenge is how do we reduce that bureaucracy? In Germany, it's a, it's a model for success. Okay, it's actually a two-step process. Okay, uh, fairly simple. You sign a contract, you fill out some paperwork online, 15 minutes later, boom, you're ready to go. So our challenge is, is taking a, a PV module that performs pretty well in California. It performs actually identically in New Jersey. But the paperwork is all different. How do we unify this process? How do we unify the 18,000 AHJs around this country, authorities having jurisdiction? This is a local and state government issue. These are our, our local building codes and, and, and state building codes. How do we unify the processes some economies of scale to enable people to innovate in this region. And so uh, we created what uh, we call the Rooftop Solar Challenge last year, and we made, I think, 22 awards around the country. Uh, New York State uh, being part of one of those awards. So th this represents roughly 40% of the population across the United States. How do we, uh, at the grassroots level, incentivize local government, state government, to simplify their processes and adopt the best practices from neighboring regions? There's some ideas that work really well. There's some ideas that don't work so well. How do we how do we learn those ideas and improve upon them? And so this is the idea behind the first round of the rooftop solar challenge. We also made awards to uh, small businesses in the IT space because imagine, you know, instead of standing in line at City Hall filling out paperwork and certificates, imagine doing it online. This is innovation, right? You know, this is the information economy. So, so, so we're funding a company called Simply Civics that is taking some of these approaches to do web-based permitting and tells you exactly where your, your permit is in the process to give some, uh, uh, some transparency uh, for consumers uh, to enable them to know where they are in this whole process. And so, uh, so this company turns out to be not just applying this concept to uh, solar permitting, but also uh, permitting and inspections at the local government level um, uh, for all sorts of things. Home improvement. So, so this platform hopefully will be very uh, exciting and adopted by uh, by many regions in this country. Uh, we also funded another company to look at uh, uh, improving uh, the market access uh, or improving customer acquisition costs for uh, deploying solar. So here's an example. Typically, when a res when a consumer uh, wants to install solar, they're thinking, "Oh, I, uh, my neighbor has solar," or something like that. 
I, I want to store my new car. I, somebody has to drive the truck out, you know, just like your cable TV guy, and go look on your rooftop. You might have to wait for him for eight hours, you know, for the cable TV guy to come over. He might climb up on your roof and, and, and do some estimates, you know, yes, your, your rooftop is suitable for solar, it'll cost you this much. Well, does it happen in that case? Well, it turns out this company is using LiDAR images around, you know, 10 major cities across the United States initially to estimate, you know, is your, is your rooftop suitable for solar? Okay, they calculate the angles of your rooftop, whether there'll be shade, UV, and they'll tell, they can tell you whether, you know, your home is better or worse uh, if you put solar on your rooftop. Because, you know, in this example, you know, some homes when you have shade, it's, it's not great for solar. So maybe you should target those customers. And so this will reduce customer acquisition costs. And so finally, uh, at the Sunshot Summit, we uh, announced the R5 uh, uh, request for information for a really audacious challenge. This is the America's most affordable rooftop challenge. Okay, we will actually launch officially uh, in the next month or so. It's a $10 million prize. Install solar at two dollars a watt at scale on on uh, residential rooftops. Now, we think about this. In the U.S., the average cost for residential uh, installation is about six dollars a watt. Can we get to two dollars a watt in the next couple of years? Okay, three x uh, uh, for the residential side. Now, keep in mind the hardware is already below you know eighty cents a watt, and so can you squeeze the rest of the system into a, uh, a buck twenty or so? In Germany, you can do this. There are systems selling for between $2 and $2.50 a watt in Germany right now. Okay. In the US, $6.50. Now, it's the same hardware. You know, PV module here is the same as PV module in Germany. So why can't we have systems in the US on <coughs> roofs at roughly $2 a watt? Thank you very much. Certainly, and there's certainly no intent, and, uh, and of course, everything has to meet building codes and uh, electrical efficiency requirements. Um, but let me ask you a question a different way. Do you think there are less protections for building installers than in the U.S.? I, I would posit no. I mean, you know, European labor laws are very strict about the sort of safety of their workers. And so, uh, so I would suggest that this is actually possible. Okay, one last question. Challenge that I've always. Uh, oh, uh, the question is about uh, whether you know. I mean, there's going to be lots of winners, of course, when we have a prize. So there's lots of lots of you know fine print associated with that. But I look at longevity, of course, and viability as a major, major question uh, for us. Which is why we have. Uh, I mentioned the regional testing facilities. This is the cost. This is to understand. You know, will these systems uh, last for 30 or so years? That we expect it to. And, and of course, uh, uh, we have PV arrays been out in fields for 30, 40 years now. We have history that they can last, okay, if we do it right. Now, there's certainly systems that will fail and, and are not reliable, and hopefully uh, companies and manufacturers understand those things uh, to make sure that uh, the product that we, we try to sell uh, as a product that lasts 30 years uh, 
you know, we'll be back last week. So uh, you're talking about the translation between upfront costs, upfront capital costs, and uh, LTOE. And so upfront capital costs are what we, when we talk about dollars per watt, that's the upfront capital cost. And then when you translate that to LTOE, the levelized cost of, of uh, electricity, you have to amortize the upfront costs and also assumptions in OEM mm -hmm. over its lifetime. And so, uh, so there is a factor uh, put in there for, um, uh, for the operations and maintenance over the lifetime of the system. The assumption is generally 25 years. All right, let's thank Main once last time.